Hey car enthusiasts, welcome back to the channel. Today we're uncovering some automotive disasters that were so bad, they ended up in a landfill. Yes, you heard that right. These cars were so unwanted that they were literally thrown away. Get ready to be shocked as we count down 5 cars that were thrown into a landfill. Let's get started. Starting our list at number 5, the 1951 Hoffmann. This German microcar was notorious for its bizarre design and poor performance. It had a tiny 200cc engine, and a body that looked like it was cobbled together in a hurry. The Hoffman was so poorly received that many of them were simply abandoned, with some even ending up in landfills. Let's delve into why the 1951 Hoffman is remembered as one of the worst cars ever made. Design and Concept The Hoffman was conceived in post-war Germany, a time when the country was grappling with economic challenges and a shortage of resources. The idea was to create an affordable, compact car that could cater to the needs of the average consumer. However, the execution of this idea left much to be desired. The Hoffman's design was unconventional, to say the least. Its body looked hastily assembled, with a peculiar shape that was neither aerodynamic nor aesthetically pleasing. The car had a rear-mounted 200cc engine, which was incredibly underpowered, even by microcar standards. The engine struggled to deliver sufficient power, resulting in sluggish acceleration and a top speed that barely reached 30 miles per hour. Performance and Build Quality The performance of the Hoffman was abysmal. The tiny engine meant that the car could barely keep up with city traffic, let alone handle any sort of highway driving. The vehicle's handling was equally problematic with a high center of gravity and narrow wheelbase making it prone to tipping over during sharp turns or sudden maneuvers. Build quality was another major issue. The Hoffman was riddled with structural weaknesses and poorly fitted components. Doors often didn't close properly, the body panels were prone to rust, and the interior was sparse and uncomfortable. The car's electrical system was unreliable, leading to frequent breakdowns. These issues contributed to the car's poor reputation and high abandonment rate. Market Reception and Sales The Hoffman entered a market that was desperate for affordable transportation, but its numerous flaws quickly became apparent. Consumers were put off by its ungainly appearance and dismal performance. The car's lack of reliability meant that it spent more time in repair shops than on the road. Sales of the Hoffman were predictably poor. The car failed to attract a significant customer base and those who did purchase it often regretted their decision. The Hoffman's shortcomings were so severe that many owners simply abandoned their cars when they broke down, unable or unwilling to deal with the constant repairs. Legacy and Impact The 1951 Hoffman is now a footnote in automotive history, remembered more for its failures than any contributions to the industry. It serves as a cautionary tale about the importance of thorough design and engineering, even in budget vehicles. While some automotive enthusiasts may appreciate the Hoffman for its quirky design and historical context, it is generally regarded as one of the worst cars ever produced. The car's legacy is one of missed opportunities and poor execution. It stands as a reminder of the challenges faced by post-war automakers and the consequences of cutting corners in vehicle design and production. The Hoffman story is a testament to the importance of quality and reliability in automotive manufacturing, lessons that are still relevant today. Conclusion In conclusion, the 1951 Hoffman earns its place at number 5 on our list of the worst cars due to its bizarre design, poor performance, and abysmal build quality. Despite its aim to provide affordable transportation in post-war Germany, the Hoffman failed to deliver on almost every front. Its legacy as one of the worst cars ever made is well deserved, making it a fitting entry on our list. At number 4, we have the 1989 Yugo GV. This car was imported from Yugoslavia and marketed as an affordable, reliable vehicle. Unfortunately, the Yugo quickly gained a reputation for being unreliable and cheaply made. After numerous recalls and safety concerns, many Yugos ended up being scrapped and tossed into landfills. Let's dive into why the 1989 Yugo GV is remembered as one of the worst cars ever sold in America. Design and Concept The Yugo GV 
short for great value, was introduced to the American market with the promise of being an economical and practical car. Imported from Yugoslavia by Malcolm Bricklin, the Yugo was touted as the cheapest new car available in the United States. Its base price was a mere 3,990, which attracted many budget-conscious buyers. The design of the Yugo GV was based on the Fiat 127, a popular European model. However, the Yugo's build quality and assembly processes were far inferior to its Italian counterpart. The exterior design was boxy and uninspired, lacking the charm or appeal of other compact cars of its time. The interior was equally basic, with a sparse dashboard and low-quality materials that gave it a very budget feel. Performance and Build Quality Under the hood, the Yugo GV was equipped with a 1.1-liter four-cylinder engine that produced a modest 55 horsepower. This engine was woefully underpowered, resulting in sluggish acceleration and a top speed of just over 85 miles per hour. The car's handling was poor, with vague steering and a suspension system that struggled to provide a comfortable ride. The Yugo's build quality was notoriously bad. The car was prone to rust, electrical failures, and mechanical breakdowns. Doors and windows often didn't align properly, and the car's overall structural integrity was questionable. Many owners reported issues with the transmission, brakes, and even basic components like the windshield wipers and door handles. Recalls and Safety Concerns The Yugo GV faced numerous recalls due to serious safety concerns. One of the most infamous issues was the tendency for the timing belt to fail prematurely, which could cause catastrophic engine damage. Other recalls addressed problems with the fuel system, exhaust system, and various electrical components. In crash tests, the Yugo performed poorly, highlighting its lack of structural safety features. The car's small size and flimsy construction offered little protection in the event of an accident. These safety concerns further tarnished the Yugo's reputation and contributed to its eventual downfall. Market Reception and Legacy Despite its initial appeal as an affordable car, the Yugo GV quickly became a punchline in the automotive world. Jokes about the Yugo's unreliability and shoddy construction were common, and the car was frequently cited as an example of what not to buy. Sales plummeted as word of the Yugo's numerous issues spread, and many owners found themselves stuck with a vehicle that was more trouble than it was worth. The legacy of the Yugo GV is one of failure and disappointment. While it aimed to provide an economical transportation solution, it ultimately failed to deliver on reliability, safety, and build quality. The car's reputation for being one of the worst vehicles ever made has endured, making it a staple on lists of automotive flops. Conclusion In conclusion, the 1989 Yugo GV earns its place at number 4 on our list of the worst cars due to its poor build quality, numerous recalls, and overall lack of reliability. While it was marketed as an affordable option for budget-conscious buyers, the reality was a car that fell apart far too quickly and frequently. The Yugo GV serves as a cautionary tale about the importance of quality and safety in automotive manufacturing securing its place in automotive history for all the wrong reasons. Coming in at number 3, the 1957 Renault Dauphine. This French import was initially popular due to its low price and cute design. However, it was plagued with mechanical issues, including rust problems and poor performance. Many Dauphines were discarded and eventually found their way to the landfill. Let's explore why the 1957 Renault Dauphine is remembered as one of the worst cars ever to hit the American market design and concept. The Renault Dauphine was introduced as a small, affordable, and stylish car that appealed to urban drivers looking for a compact vehicle. Its design was charming, with rounded edges and a cheerful, almost whimsical appearance. The Dauphine was marketed as a practical car for city dwellers, emphasizing its compact size and fuel efficiency. The car featured a rear-engine layout, a common design for European cars of the time. It had a small 845cc inline-four engine that produced around 32 horsepower. While this engine was sufficient for city driving, it struggled with anything more demanding, such as highway speeds or carrying heavy loads. Performance and Build Quality The performance of the Renault Dauphine left much to be desired. The car's acceleration was sluggish, 
and its top speed was barely 70 miles per hour. The rear engine design, while innovative, led to handling issues. The Dauphine was prone to oversteer, making it difficult to control, especially in wet or icy conditions. Build quality was another significant problem. The Dauphine was notoriously prone to rust, especially in regions with harsh winters or high humidity. The car's body panels and undercarriage were particularly susceptible to corrosion, leading to structural weaknesses over time. Electrical issues were also common, with many owners reporting problems with the car's wiring and lighting systems. Mechanical Issues and Reliability The Dauphine's mechanical reliability was poor. The small engine, while efficient, was underpowered, and often required frequent maintenance. Cooling system failures were common, leading to overheating issues. The car's suspension system was also a weak point, providing a rough and uncomfortable ride. One of the most significant mechanical issues was the Dauphine's transmission. The three-speed manual gearbox was clunky and difficult to shift smoothly. Many owners experienced problems with the gearbox slipping out of gear or failing altogether. These mechanical shortcomings severely impacted the Dauphine's reputation and left many owners frustrated with their purchase. Market Reception and Legacy Despite its initial popularity, the Renault Dauphine's numerous issues quickly overshadowed its early success. The car's low price attracted many buyers, but its long-term reliability was so poor that many owners abandoned their Dauphine, rather than continue to sink money into repairs. The car's reputation for rust and mechanical failures made it a frequent sight in junkyards and landfills. The legacy of the Renault Dauphine is one of unmet expectations and disappointment. While it aimed to provide an affordable and stylish transportation option, it ultimately failed to deliver on reliability and durability. The Dauphine is often remembered as a prime example of the pitfalls of cost-cutting in automotive design and production. Conclusion In conclusion, the 1957 Renault Dauphine earns its place at number 3 on our list of the worst cars due to its poor build quality, numerous mechanical issues, and overall lack of reliability. While its cute design and low price initially attracted buyers, the reality of owning a Dauphine quickly turned sour for many. The car's legacy as one of the worst vehicles ever sold in America is well-deserved, serving as a cautionary tale about the importance of quality and durability in automotive manufacturing. Number two on our list is the 1975 Bricklin SV1. This Canadian sports car was designed with safety in mind, but its poor build quality and mechanical issues led to its downfall. Production was halted after just two years, and many unsold Bricklins were discarded and buried in landfills. Let's dive into why the Bricklin SV1 earned its spot on our list of the worst cars ever made. Design and Concept The Bricklin SV1, short for Safety Vehicle 1, was the brainchild of Malcolm Bricklin, an American entrepreneur with ambitious plans to revolutionize the automotive industry. The SV1 was designed to prioritize safety, featuring an integrated roll cage, energy-absorbing bumpers, and unique gullwing doors. The car's body was made from acrylic resin and fiberglass, giving it a distinctive and futuristic appearance. However, the SV1's focus on safety came at the expense of other critical aspects, such as performance and build quality. While the car's concept was admirable, the execution was far from perfect. Performance and build quality. Under the hood, the 1975 Bricklin SV1 was initially powered by a 360 cubic inch, 5.9 liter AMC V8 engine, later replaced by a Ford sourced 351 cubic inch, 5.8 liter V8. These engines provided decent power, but the car's overall performance was hampered by its heavy weight and subpar engineering. The SV1's acceleration and handling were mediocre at best, failing to live up to the expectations of a sports car. The build quality of the Bricklin SV1 was a significant issue. The car's production process was rushed and plagued by financial difficulties, leading to numerous problems with fit and finish. The acrylic resin and fiberglass body panels were prone to cracking and fading, while the gullwing doors, though innovative, were heavy and difficult to operate. The doors were powered by a pneumatic system that frequently failed, leaving owners with doors that were either stuck open or closed. Mechanical Issues and Reliability The Bricklin SV1 was notorious for its mechanical reliability issues. The car's electrical system was particularly problematic, with frequent reports of wiring failures and electrical fires. 
The cooling system was also inadequate, leading to frequent overheating, especially in warmer climates. The transmission and drivetrain components were prone to failure, and parts availability was a constant challenge for owners. The combination of these issues resulted in a car that was not only frustrating to own, but also expensive to maintain. Many Bricklin SV1s ended up spending more time in the shop than on the road, leading to widespread dissatisfaction among owners. Market Reception and Legacy The Bricklin SV1's market reception was lukewarm at best. Despite its innovative safety features and striking design, the car's numerous flaws quickly became apparent. Production was halted in 1976 after just over 2,800 units were built, and the company declared bankruptcy. Many unsold Bricklins were discarded and ended up in landfills, a testament to the car's failure in the marketplace. The legacy of the Bricklin SV1 is one of unfulfilled promise. While it aimed to set new standards for automotive safety, its poor build quality, mechanical issues, and lackluster performance overshadowed its safety innovations. The SV1 remains a cautionary tale of how even the best intentions can lead to disastrous results when execution falls short. Conclusion In conclusion, the 1975 Bricklin SV1 earns its place at number two on our list of the worst cars due to its poor build quality, numerous mechanical issues, and overall lack of reliability. While its focus on safety was commendable, the car's execution left much to be desired. The Bricklin SV1 serves as a stark reminder that innovation alone is not enough to guarantee success in the automotive world. Quality and reliability are equally important. And finally, at number one, the 1949 Crossley Hotshot. Despite being one of the first post-war American sports cars, the Hotshot's tiny engine and flimsy construction made it a tough sell. Many Crossleys were abandoned and left to rust, with some ending up in landfills as a result of their poor durability and performance. Let's delve deeper into the history and shortcomings of the Crossley Hotshot, the car that tops our list of the worst vehicles ever made. Design and Concept the Crossley Hotshot was introduced in 1949 by the Crossley Corporation, an American manufacturer known for its compact cars. The Hotshot was a small, two-seat roadster, designed to be affordable and fun to drive. Its lightweight construction and minimalist design aimed to capture the spirit of European sports cars, which were gaining popularity in the United States. The Hotshot featured a sleek, open-top design with minimalistic styling, it was intended to be a no-frills sports car that provided an exhilarating driving experience at a low cost. However, the car's simplicity quickly turned into a drawback. Performance and Build Quality Under the hood, the Crosley Hotshot was powered by a 724cc, 26.5-horsepower four-cylinder engine. While this may have been adequate for a motorcycle or small economy car, it severely limited the Hotshot's performance as a sports car. The engine struggled to provide sufficient power, making acceleration sluggish and top speeds modest at best. The Hotshot's performance was a far cry from the thrilling experience sports car enthusiasts expected. The build quality of the Hotshot was another significant issue. The car's construction was flimsy, with thin body panels that offered little protection or durability. The lightweight design, while beneficial for fuel efficiency, made the car feel insubstantial and fragile. The interior was spartan, lacking basic comforts and amenities. The combination of poor build quality and minimal features made the Hotshot feel more like a toy than a serious vehicle. Mechanical Issues and Reliability The Crosley Hotshot was notorious for its mechanical problems. The small engine was prone to overheating, and the car's electrical system was unreliable. The brakes were inadequate, leading to concerns about safety. The flimsy construction also meant that the car was susceptible to rust and corrosion, particularly in areas with harsh weather conditions. Owners of the Hotshot often found themselves dealing with frequent breakdowns and repairs. The car's poor reliability and high maintenance costs quickly soured the ownership experience. Many Hotshots were abandoned as their owners grew tired of the constant mechanical issues, leaving the cars to rust and deteriorate. Market Reception and Legacy the Crosley Hotshot's market reception was underwhelming. While it garnered some attention for being one of the first post-war American sports cars, its numerous flaws quickly became apparent. 
sales were disappointing, and the car failed to establish a foothold in the competitive automotive market. Production of the Hotshot was discontinued in 1952, after just a few years. The legacy of the Crossley Hotshot is a cautionary tale of unfulfilled promise. While it aimed to offer an affordable, fun-to-drive sports car, its poor performance, flimsy build quality, and lack of reliability overshadowed its potential. The Hot Shot remains a symbol of a missed opportunity in American automotive history. Conclusion In conclusion, the 1949 Crosley Hot Shot earns its place at number one on our list of the worst cars due to its tiny engine, flimsy construction, and poor reliability. Despite being one of the first post-war American sports cars, it failed to live up to expectations and left many owners disappointed. The Hot Shot's legacy is one of unfulfilled promise, serving as a reminder of the importance of quality and performance in automotive design. So, there you have it. Five cars that were so bad, they ended up in a landfill. Were you shocked by any of these? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell for more automotive content. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.